there is a creature in the deep waters of the ocean who can eat anything that swims by, even nuclear submarines. Wait, what? Yeah, you heard it right. A submarine. Hi, and welcome back to the Fact Pack channel, where we pack the amazingness from all over the world. So make yourself comfortable, and once you're ready, let's get started. It was the 70s. Apollo 13 has made its remarkable return home, the Beatles have broken up, and the Cold War was in full swing. An American nuclear submarine was on patrol, searching for their Russian counterparts in clandestine game of cat and mouse, when suddenly, without warning, something attacked. Their radar and microphones were destroyed beyond repair, leaving the Americans blind in the water. Fear struck at the heart of the US Navy. Was it a new stealthy piece of Russian tack, or was it something else? The damage was apparent once the submarine was in the dry dock. Something had taken out the entire radar with a single blow. This wasn't a straightforward patch-up job. The whole system needed to be replaced. After a while, the engineers found the damage. A single round hole punched into the rubber casing of the radar, which let the oil inside leach out and seawater in ruining the delicate electronics inside. On closer inspection, the hole had saw marks on the edge rather than slice marks, making it look like someone had taken a whole saw to it. Could this be mechanical? Could there be a Russian microsub that silently targets the weak spots of America's naval pride? Panic spread amongst the officers. If the Russian possessed tag that enables them to come this close to their submarines without detection and deal such a crippling blow, then they are all in grave danger. However, there were some strange tooth marks on the rubber, and the only things that can swim slightly enough to get up close to a sub's microphones without being detected are fish. Could this be biological? Has a new terror of the deep steered to take down the US Navy? Luckily, before anyone took any actions, someone noticed the shape, size and markings, and recognized it is a bite from one of the strangest sharks in the sea, the cookie cutter shark. Cookie cutter sharks were once known as cigar sharks because nobody knew just how they ate. Once a biologist discovered their secret, it explained the mysterious deep holes made in the equipment of nuclear submarines. These sharks aren't that scary if you look at them closely. It's only about a foot and a half long, which is about 45 centimeters and thinner than most adults' wrists. Only there is one problem with this shark. It thinks nothing of attacking animals a lot larger than itself. Even the most dangerous one, the nuclear submarine, obviously. Yeah, I know it's not quite an animal. However, up until the 60s, it didn't occur to biologists to connect this innocuous looking shark to the deep, crater like bites that they saw in tuna, in dolphins, and in whales. It wasn't until 1971 that Everett Jones published a paper suggesting that cigar shark was responsible for the crater wounds on fish and cetaceans. In 1969, Jones had been on an expedition during which he caught tuna with deep circular wounds. A day later, the expedition brought in more tuna, which shared a net with these small sharks. When Jones took a shark and placed it against the side of a fish, the shark bit into the fish, making a comparably sized wound. The cat-sized shark doesn't look that intimidating, but thanks to its speed and camouflage abilities, it can successfully feed on any fish in the waters, including even such dangerous species as sharks, orcas and whales. But this shark is not a typical predator which kills the animals or fish around. No, this little monster would be satisfied with just taking a bite of other animals, and then he immediately runs away. This makes him more of a parasite. So what's up with the teeth, speed and camouflage of the little shark that causes such a pain in ass to everyone around? Let's begin with teeth. The cookie cutter shark gets its name from the cookie shaped bite wounds it leaves on its prey. The shark's unique teeth and shark con snout create these round chunks. It will attach itself to a tuna stingray, another shark or even a whale by suctioning its lips to the body of the animal. Then. The shark spins its body using its lower set of serrated teeth like a can opener to remove a hunk of flesh resulting in a wound that lives up to the shark's name. What's about their camouflage? Cookie cutter sharks are dark brown to black on the upper side of their body and a lighter brown on the lower side. Their gel regions have a dark color around them. The whole lower surface minus this dark color is covered in a dense network of tiny photophores. These photophores emit a greenish glow called bioluminescence. Not only does the emitted glow attract fish, but also the dark patch on the shark's upper surface resembles a smaller fish when viewed from below. 
This marking is believed to lure larger fish and other potential prey that may be swimming underneath it. And of course, a fish that is causing such a nasty pain to sharks can be moving slowly afterwards. It has to sneak away immediately after biting, otherwise it would definitely appear on the predatory fish's dinner. Nuclear subs obviously aren't all that tasty, but they seem to bite just about anything, even research equipment in the ocean. The distinctive bites have been found in all kinds of fish and other sharks, and even a human has been attacked by the little guys. However, these cases are really rare. So, monsters capable of crippling a nuclear submarine do lark in the depths of the oceans, and all it took was one bite. But rather than being a Godzilla-like horror, it is a tiny, semi-parasitic shark with the weirdest set of jaws in the deep. Yet more proof that the life beneath the waves is stranger than fiction. Thank you so much for watching this video. Give us a like if you enjoyed watching and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next videos.